Hello everybody. Okay, so Unit 3, Lesson 3, Topic 1 today, Arrays of Objects. And if you understand arrays and what happens with arrays when we store data, this will not be too difficult a topic f for us. Okay? So first of all, let's go have a look at why we want to use arrays to store different objects in an application. Take an application like the student application. Won't it be nice if I can add many different students? I'm just going to, instead of a surname, add a name for now. And then Let's go and add bin. And be able to view the data of the different students. Be able to enter the test data. So let's say got Sue got 50 for test 1. Sue got 60 for test 2. <laughs> so now if I go to bin bin has got zeros, no data entered yet. For Sue we've got 50 and 60, so if I want to enter the data for Ben, let's say Ben got 66 for test 1 and for text 2 77. Assume test 2 wasn't written yet. We've got different functionality, hey? So now let's say uh, test 1 actually was increased by 10% for that specific student for whatever reason that it's changed. So if I now go to the view students, Sue has got 55 and 60 for test 1 and test 2, Ben has got 66 and 77 for test 1 and test 2. So if I go view the semester marks, currently it would work out as something like that. If I want to see all my student data again, if I want to display the data of the student with the highest semester mark, let's say, and I can even go and increase all, let's say, these twos by 5%. And he changes to 63 and 81. So obviously, saving different objects and allowing them functionality to to do to use that all the students um, is real real useful. I just showed you a quick glimpse of what we can do. Okay, so why do we want to store objects in an array so that I can store all the data of an object one at a time in an array? I'm going to show you a little bit better how we're going to save it in memory now. Let's start with just normal number arrays. So if I've got the number array like this, dim array numbers, higher subscript is 4, that stores integers. It gives me an array called array numbers that can store 5 elements. So if I now use a loop to traverse the array from the start to the end, end would be array numbers dot length minus one that's the best to use and I've got something like that what's going to happen in the array so first of all count would be initialized to zero that means in the first array element array numbers of position or index zero what are we going to store zero plus ten and it's going to store ten Next, the counter would be incremented when the loop is finished. So count will become 1. And then array numbers, position 1 will store. 1 plus 10 would be 11. Would be stored. Eh? And if the array counter again is incremented, this time around to 2 and this is done automatically by the for loop array numbers position 2 
would store 2 plus 10, so that would be a 12. Okay. And in much the same manner, we're going to fill the rest of the elements with 13 and 14. Okay. So, if I declare an array of type integer, then it means I can store numbers in the array. Only one number per position. I can store though as many numbers as I declare the array with. Okay. So, now, if I go define an array of the type student, what does that mean? My array can store student objects. And at this stage, again, just um, let's just fix the I just quickly fix the um, higher subscript. So um, if we use two, then it means I've got three elements stored in the array. And if we use a filled array, I will store it with an array counter. And initially it stores zero. So now if the user enters the first data, let's say something like this. User enters a uh, two. Th 0, 0 at 1 for the student number and not long for the surname and initially when the object is created the three tests would be 0 we use exactly the same um, constructor as before if I now store that in position array students of array count so my statement to store the object would be pretty much something like this array students of position array count store the object student just increase the font a little bit what's going to happen we take the object that was created and now we're going to save it in the first array element and thereafter array counter will be incremented I need to same as what we did before save another array count tells me how many objects are saved so after I saved my first data array count specifies one <coughs> it really tells me there's one element saved so if I now go and I allow the user to enter the data of another student so let's say the user entered some student number and the surname is Niku now the statement that says save the object in students of position array count will take the object and it's going to save it in the array in the position that array count specifies so I don't just store a number now I store all the data of the student the student number, the surname and the three test marks whatever I specified I need to save in the student class this is saved in the array so now if I've got just do it like this if I've got some code that says take array student increase the font quite a bit let's say position 0 give me the surname then that will print not long 
if I say take array students, actually A, eh, the array name has got a plural S, position 1 and give me the student number, then this will give me back lots of zeros, I'm not going to count how many, and the 2. So now using the array I can access the different properties. I can actually go a little bit further. If I want all the students semester marks now, I can write a for loop. For count start at zero, go to array count minus one. And did you see what I forgot to do now? Hmm. As soon as I save this data, array count would be incremented, eh? So that too would have changed. Or that one would have changed to two. And it's now slightly bigger font. Doesn't matter. Okay. And if I um then just want to let's say write a for loop to go and calculate all the students marks I will do it as follows Right students I use my loop counter calc semester mark whatever my function would be called and if the function displays some data and I want to maybe display it I can first of all save it and then thereof to use that to go and display let's say in a list box Um, obviously the semester mark only won't help me so I will most probably just at least store the name the surname of the student and then the a message that says semester mark and then the value that was saved so now using loops I can process many different objects and we're going to see how to do it the important thing is that you know where we are aiming at I want to now in an array store an entire object this will store all the data of the object one per element I edited um, this statement just slightly so that everything is displayed neatly. So in uh, summary, have a look. We can call any method that we need to. In this stage, for this method, I am merely saving the answer in a variable. I'm saving the answer in this would be a local variable declared with a dim statement in this procedure most probably saving it and then using it we can use it immediately as well if we need to same as what I did there with the surname with the surname I am calling a property hey surname is a property the calc semester mark would have been a function a method a method coded as a function so I can either use one specific object at a time and here I specified I want object at index one I want that student number and then that data is returned or the object at position zero I want that surname and then what long is returned or if I use a loop where my counter will go 
from 0 to the end of the array at this stage it would be 2 minus 1 so from 0 to 1 I can call the calculate semester mark for the first object at position 0 because that's what counter would be and then display that data array students position 0 the surname and then the semester mark that I've already calculated and saved in a variable the counter will increase to 1 and now I will call array students index 1 this calculate semester mark that value is saved in semester sem for short and then next line I call the output line I display array students position 1 the surname and then next to it the semester mark okay so we saw a little bit of processing I actually executed a program this program I'm going to complete in the example end of this lesson we saw how we could add data to a partially filled array we add students we use the constructor that takes the student number and the surname and it initialized all the tests to zero initially we saw how to update one object in the partially filled array by adding the tests for the object for Sue we added two tests and for Ben we added two tests and then we used a method to increase the test mark for Sue we can also mm, update all process say eh? so display the data anything that we need to do we can either use one object at a time in the form where I've ended the tests we did that or we could process all the objects I displayed the semester mark of all the objects I found the student with the highest semester mark between all the objects we're going to see how to do that in the end we are combining whatever you learned about arrays whatever you learned about filled arrays and then whatever you learned about objects and classes so now we're combining everything into one and then obviously in the I applications that would use all the data from that so at the end of this lesson guess what you can write a quite decent application one that can store many different objects I can process the data all that I need to and want to the only that thing that's missing is saving the data I can't save it yet as soon as I start the application we we've got blank we've got blanks no student data saved so in unit 4 we are actually going to have a look at that and as soon as we know how to save the data we've completed basically all the theory of the semester and we know everything that we need to Okay, so quite exciting. Thank you.